And just a quick overview of what we're going to cover. So we're going to review uh, Dr. Merrill's first principles of instruction, then an assignment of a course you have designed, taken part in. We're going to assess a course, then see a demonstration of a course design using first principles of instruction. Then number four, application, where we'll apply uh, Dr. Merrill's first principles of instruction in, uh, in designing a course of your choice. So, so this is the title of the course. We, we're going to design is performance-based instruction design, and it is the application of uh, Dr. M. David Merrill's first principles of instruction. So where does the story start or what is first principles of instruction? So this book was published by uh, Dr. Charles and a close associate of Dr. Merrill. And when Merrill saw the book and read the book, he told Charles, Charles, there's only one principle of, there's only one theory of instruction. Uh, Charles was not very happy, so he told him, I, I don't think so, but if you think so, go and write a paper about it. So Dr. Merrill did exactly that and wrote the first principles of instruction, right? And this has been developed through time. Then he did the first the book, the first principles of instruction. This is a 2013 book. So there are quite a number of papers before the book. And in 2020, he did uh, the book, the second edition of the first principles of instruction. So now what we want to do is, and I'll ask this to the audience, what, what factors are necessary for an effective, uh, what factors are necessary to achieve efficient, effective, and engaging training program? Right, we can share that on chat. On chat, what do you think? What factors are necessary to achieve uh, effective, efficient, and engaging learning? Martins is frozen. Well, yeah. Let's keep the let's the, keep the comment coming in while Martins um, rejoin. What factor affects or contributes to the effectiveness, efficiency, and engagement of learning? I believe he's driving at something. And for those of us that might not know, Martins is joining us all the way from Kenya, so it's afternoon for him. So let's just give him a few minutes to join back and whilst we wait, let's respond to his questions. Easy whilst you were out. And uh, they've responded to some of your questions in the chat, so you can go ahead. Okay. So uh, you'll be able to, to share some of those responses. So this was maybe uh, Johnson, you could share some of the responses that had been shared. Okay, so we have a couple of them in the in the chat. And um, your question was, what makes uh, what are the factors that affect the effectiveness, efficiency, and engagement of learning? And um, we mm -hmm. have uh, um, alignment with business objectives. We have style of delivery, training its analysis, audience awareness. Learner style of learning, needs analysis, organizational strategy, learning style, um, time objective to delivery, pre-information of learning objectives and business results to be achieved from the learning. Mm, okay. <laughs> and so on and so forth. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, and I've just seen about quality of, of, of uh, the training and about willingness, right? So the other key thing is we uh, the, the biggest problem with learning is that most learning is information only. And we use 
very few research-based principles of instruction. Now, instruction design is the science and the art of designing learning programs. So there's adult learning theories, there's the adult learning, uh, there's learning science, and it combines all that. That is what instruction uh, design is about, right? So then media and technology have eclipsed uh, in, uh, instructional strategy. Now, instructional strategy is basically how will you teach, right? That's a key problem that we're facing today. And so some of these things here, anyone familiar with any of the items written here? And this is a list compiled by, uh, by Dr. Max Cropper, who I'll say is my mentor around instruction design. Any, any, any word seems familiar here, what we're calling shiny objects? Any, anyone that looks uh, familiar? Any word that looks familiar? I think some of them one we might have touched, right? Aha, right? Learning styles, I heard about them there. Uh, upskilling, I'm upskilling, right? Yes, so now this might actually also be some of the, of, 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 of we focus on the object rather than the learning, how the designing the learning. So Dr. Dr. Uh, Merrill actually says that efficient learning would provide knowledge, should provide knowledge and skills quickly. Then, uh, then effective enables the learner to perform better. Now, the one and the only purpose of learning is to help an organization achieve its strategy. Its strategy. That's the purpose of learning. So not to, to inform, not to, and then the learning that one undertakes should help them perform better on their job and so improve on their performance. And then so Meryl says that engaging, for it, the training to engaging, to, to be engaging, it keeps the learners involved in the process, in the process of learning. Now, Meryl went ahead and identified types of knowledge and how to teach them. So you can have knowledge around information about parts of kinds of how to and what happens. And some of them are processes, some of them are procedures. Now, this grid is actually the first principles of instruction, such that it is problem uh, centered or task centered. You have an activation, an activation is what, when adults are coming to learn, they don't come with nothing, uh, with zero knowledge. They come with some knowledge. So you need to activate that knowledge to know how much they know about the topic. Then you have your demonstration, your application, and your integration. Now, we're going to come into what is in each one of them, but then we start with what is a principle. So a principle is a relationship that is always true and appropriate condition, regardless of the methods and location where, where we use to try and apply the, the principle. Now, the activation principle, the activation principle says learning is promoted when learners recall existing. So here you're trying to, to activate prior knowledge because as we said, different from children learning, adults come with some knowledge on a subject area. Then with the principle of demonstration that you need to show the learner the skill that they're going to learn. That's a demonstration. Then with the application, it should, means you have to have the learner try to use that skill that you've, the newly acquired skill. So you have activated the knowledge, you have shown the learner the skill they're going to learn, then have them practice what they've just learned. Then the integration is have them use the skill in their daily life or at work. And then they can, they're building knowledge around it. Now the principle centered is 
learning is promoted when learners acquire skill in, in the context of real world problems. So now uh, here we are saying we're not teaching learn, the learners a theoretical skill, but a practical skill that is and exists in the real world. Like, and the real world might be that workplace or what they do. Now, just to mention, they are supporting principles or corollaries to each one of the five, right? But we will, we will, we will, uh, will uh, be sharing that as we move on. Now, this is basically the structure that you'd have uh, of a five star. So you have your cost design, you have your task analysis, you have your progression of problems, you have module scenarios and design, then you develop the instruction, and then you come up with a way to teach concepts, procedures, and processes and problem solving. So now, again, we're building on the on the on the on the on the on, the, on the, how we're going to do it. So uh, number one is the task center. So you have your activation, you have your instructor demonstration, then you have the learner practicing what they've just been shown by the instructor. Then you have the learner using what they've learned at their way daily work uh, at their workplace. So now I'm going to show with you, share with you. This is a course I'm working on. And uh, the whole idea behind this course is that this is for managers in a beverage company. And what one of the things they want to develop is to have all managers be customer centric. Now, so we want to have them perform tasks and behaviors that make them to be, uh, to be seen as customer centric. So for the activation, We'll be conducting an assessment on customer centricity on all the knowledge of the customer centricity on all the managers. Then share the stories on customer centricity. Then for the demonstration, we'll be telling them of elements of customer centricity. There are about 10 of them, so we'll tell each one of them. Then show the customer centricity in an organization, demonstrating the 10 elements. For the application, we'll have learners do a role play on how to be customer centric. Then for integration, we will have the learners create an action plan on how to integrate customer centric elements in their daily work. Now, as we move on, you can put on your questions on chat. Now, I want us to do a small exercise. If you've designed how many if you have designed a training, just type on chat yes, a Y for yes, then I want you to evaluate the training that you've actually brand or designed. And you're looking at is it task centered? Does it have activation of prior knowledge for the learners? And then the on the row on the column with possible marks points, that's a maximum you can give on that item. So you have task centered you're looking at does your does you, is your course have a big task centered does it have a task that you want the learners to be able to perform and then you're looking at the activation is there an activity that helps the learner recall uh, prior knowledge and the, of the task then you're looking at does it have demonstrations are whole tasks demonstrated effectively then you're looking at application does the tra your training program give the learners the opportunity to practice the whole task? Then the, whole, the integration is uh, the learners are given the opportunity to plan the implementation of the new skill. So I'd like us out of 100 and out of each of these marks in these sections, if we can give marks to our, the, a course we've designed or a course we've even trained, because I saw we have some trainers in the group in the, in the session. So just take one, one minute to just quickly do this. And this the column you'd be working is the cost before revision. Then post this program, you can redesign and do an evaluation of the cost after redesign. So anyone with some score? Okay. 
Sorry, did we all hear Martin's um, ask? So if you've designed any program before, just it's, it's more like a self-assessment where, okay, okay, people don't understand. So it's a self-assessment where you try to evaluate the program that you've developed initially or you've developed previously in line with these parameters. Now, the whole idea of Mary's principle is to help design effective programs that people can actually perform on the job. So the task is look at a program that you've developed before. Maybe you facilitated or you've been a part of the old design process and try to rate yourself in line with these parameters. Is it task-centered? Um, did it help learners activate or recall previous learning? Were there demonstrations that show how it's going to be implemented? And did, you, did the course show them how it's going to be integrated in the business? So you can just rate yourself. You have the max mark for each of the parameters under the points possible. So just rate yourself if it's stack centered, if the course was um, led to recall of uh, his, uh, previous learning. Maybe if we get one or two responses, then Martins will, will yes. proceed. Or the trainers yeah. are in here. You can just and, and and again, it's 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 not it's no shame to to have low mark. It's we are all learning in this uh, in this uh, course. So whatever it is, and it's a self evaluation. Look at the course oh, you yeah. designed. How, how how was it? Yeah, and and again, we are not evaluating you as a trainer. We are evalu you are evaluating the course, right? It's okay. So uh, Adam, I see a hand up. I don't know. Okay. Uh, James, James, we want to respond to this, or you want to ask a question? Maybe let's ask them from you. Although typically the question and answer is at the end of the session, but yeah, let's, James, if you have a question, please unmute. Uh, thank uh, you, Adimola. I don't know whether okay. you can hear me. Uh, yes, we can. Nairobi. Thank you very much. Awesome. No. Uh, a question um, uh, responding to the request for one or two of us to give a response to the valuation uh, okay. <laughs> very self insightful uh, I think for me when I did the score um, for whatever it might come to I, the total for me came to 60 whereby for task centered I think I for the course was 20 the activation could have been better I got five um, the demonstration, I, I think uh, the effectiveness would definitely have improved. And for that one, I gave myself a 10. For the application was um, 15. I was happy, despite the unique challenges earlier, um, eventually after we improved, there was some good integration. So nearly between nine and 10. So that's what I got. So I just wanted to share as requested. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Thank okay. you very much, James. And, and also for me, it's a pleasure to know I have uh, guys from Nairobi, who, who from Kenya, who, who joined in the session to listen to this. A lot of them, Mark. A <laughs> lot of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then now, this just keep that score so that when you do redesign re re your course, then you can come back and, and assess uh, and evaluate your course. Now, what Dr. Merrill says is the levels of, of, of trainings. Now, if your training program is presentation only, information only, that would be a level zero. Then level one is, if you add demonstration, then you move on to a level one. If you had, if you add an application, then you move it to, it moves, the training moves to a level two. And then if you make it task centered, then it would be a level three. And if you have activation and integration, then that would be a level five or a five star, five star uh, learning program. Now, just again to demonstrate some something I've, I was working on, and in this course, the idea was to have the the learners be able to create an organization strategic plan and apply the balance scorecard on the organization strategy. So for the activation, I had, uh, I'll provide an example of a strategy that has been executed using the balance scorecard. For demonstration, I'll, demonst uh, I'll do a demonstration of how an organization created its strategy 
and executed it using the Ballard scorecard. Then for, for the application, I'd have learners practice strategic creation process and creating the Ballard scorecard. And for the integration would be to have the learners reflect on the steps taken uh, to create the strategy and executing, execute it using the balance scorecard. Now with integration, I have to mention there are things within the trainer's control and there are others with, out of them. Now, like if it is an in-house program, you, one of the integration would be have the learners actually create an organization strategy and apply the balance scorecard on that strategy. So this is the, this is the general big, uh, a big picture view of the, of the program. Now, the next thing is to create a task analysis. And the task analysis is looking at what are the skills, what are the competencies required so that you can achieve your task. So you break down each skill that is required and then look at what are the sub-skills sub that are required. Now, traditionally, I know we are used to modules and topics but then now we're breaking it down differently. We're breaking it into the core main competencies and then the sub competencies to be able to perform a task. Then now again, mapping the, 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 the program. So, uh, and these are the core, I, the, your, the major competencies. Then I'm looking at how am I, I'm coming up with a scenario and now like scenario one, the scenario for a performance, uh, the strategy and performance manager at company X has been asked to lead the organization in coming up with the next strategic plan for the organization. The current 2018-2022 strategy comes to an end. So I'm looking at for each major competency, what instructional strategy am I going to use? Now, Dr. Merrill is very specific on instructional strategies. So he has the tell, the show, the do. And then within the do, there are a number of, of do's. So this is, the do is the application for the learner. The, the tell is the general. The show is in a specific instance, right? So, uh, and then again, I'll look at each of the core competencies for the pre-strategy activities. Now, for the first scenario, we would do it together with the learners. Then for the second scenario, the uh, scenario two is I'd tell the learners what to, to tell the learners about, uh, SWOT and PESTEL, then show them PESTEL from an organization that has done its, its, uh, its, its uh, SWOT analysis or PESTEL. Then for the do, have them identify the various parts or, or how to how to do uh, the pastel analysis. Okay, so maybe, uh, Johnson, maybe before we go to the exercise, let's take on some questions. Okay, that, that, that works, that works. So, so far, if we have any questions for Martin, just raise up your hand and um, so that we can ask you to unmute. Any questions? on what has been discussed so far. Could be maybe something that has happened in the organization or something from these slides or something that has happened in the integration that is relating to what has been discussed or something on these slides totally. Any questions? Going once, going twice? Oh, okay. Yes, Alibaya, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question. Adebayo, Adebayo. Okay, so there is a there is a question. There are two questions in the in the chat. One from Moni Sola. I don't know if you can see it, Martin. She says, yes, "Is I the task see. analysis okay? Awesome." Okay. Okay, I see the questions now. The task analysis is very different from a competency framework. A task analysis just analyzes the different parts of the task. Like if I was to put together a form, I would have to put on the battery, put on the cover, put on the screen. A competency framework is a set of skills 
that are required in an organization for various roles, right? So a little bit different, but the task analysis we're doing is on the task. Now a task requires some competencies to be able to do it, right? And those competencies we are talking about, you might find them in the competency framework of the organization, because then it's, if you have those competencies, then you'd be able to perform that task, right? So the task analysis here, what we did was to break down. I want the, like, if I may just go back on the screen to this example here, for this training, is this is the balance scorecard. I was, uh, is a design for my balance scorecard course. And the task I want these learners to be able to do after the training is to be able to create an organization's strategic plan. If I'll just stop there, for them to be able to, 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 to develop a strategic plan, they would need to be able to formulate strategy. They would need to be able to come on row one, just after the, with going down with develop as the strategy. These are the skills, these are the competencies that they would require to be able to develop a strategic plan. Now, these are the skills that I'm going to teach using with, the, with what I'm using first principles of instruction. So it, I would not provide information on what is SWOT analysis or, or, or I would actually go into the practical hands-on. What is the process? What are the procedures of conducting a SWOT analysis? So there's, how do you, what is this procedure of identifying the value gap? Not providing information, right? Quite different from an information-based. Now, there is the other one I'm seeing, please, can I really know where instruction design is used in training? Now, instruction design, is the science and art of designing training. Now, some time here back, I asked people, how do you design your training? They said, no, I just Google, get the materials from the, from, from the internet and make it look good and I deliver, right? Now here we are looking at a systematic way. And instruction design has been in existence for more than 75 years, uh, right from how World War I soldiers were being taught uh, uh, by uh, with the American army. Okay, so those were the two questions. So I uh, saw. So now to our exercise. Now I want someone to come up, see the exercise, the course that you'd like to design. If you can share that on chat. If you were to design a training, what would you want the what task would you want? The, your learners to be able to perform after the training. So we just want to design a high level overview of a course design using first principles of instruction. So if you can share that on chat, a course that you'd like to teach. Now, normally we are used to trainings being in course titles rather than the tasks you'd want them, the learners to be able to, to, to perform. So that's one of the change that is okay. So I'm seeing to fix effective communication. So here I'd say that you do the task would be the, the learner to, to communicate effectively. So this would be the, the learner to communicate effectively. So this would be the, the task. Uh, I'll just move out of screen share. Sorry, I'll just minimize this. Let me just move out of presentation so that we can work to get to, together on this. Okay, let me just... Okay, so just one minute. So we'll work with, this would be the task that we want. Let me just try and make my... So the task would be... The task would be... 
ולמה? So this is the task, the learner to, the learner to be able to communicate effectively. Okay, but here we need effectively is a, it doesn't mean what would be the definition of effectively, but we need to break down things very, to very where, where they're very specific and not uh, big ones. So let's say, the learner to be able to communicate, if, uh, to communicate and be understood, which is basically effectiveness. Now, how would how can we be able to activate activate prior learning in the area of the learner to be able to communicate and be understood? Again, you can share that on chat so that we can just, just build on this. And then my assignment to you would be to, to create a first principles grid of your course, right? So uh, I just shared that on chat and I've put it on there. So our task would be the learner to be able to communicate effectively. Now, for, for, for activation, we can do an assessment on learners communication skills skill and level for demonstration we can have we can do a show a video Show a video of good communication and then show a video of poor communication. Now we we also need to have good examples and bad examples. Then for the integration, we can have the learner, the learner. Maybe write an email. Uh, needing a task. No, an email with instructions on a task. Let's say call it on a job. So the one you want them to write an email to some to, to 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 maybe a junior giving them asking them to perform a specific task so that uh so that we 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 can see was the message properly understood then for the integration we can have the learner uh plans on Uh, how to integrate, how to acquire and use communication, learned communication skills. So basically at a high level, this is what will be our, 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 Learn how to, to learn on how to use acquire like or learn communication skills. At a high level, this is our course design. And this is what will be guiding us as we design the course. So from here now we can go look we create a task analysis for communication skills where we'll identify what are all those competencies that you require and then the sub for good communication, and then what are the sub, uh, comp uh, sub competencies, and then that's what we would be able to teach the learners. 
So my, ta my task to you would be with this, uh, the, the course that you have shared, just try and work on, on, on uh, the, what we call this table like here, the first principles grid, and then see what it looks like. And then now you're already plugging in what activation you'll be using, you're already plugging in what demonstration you'll be using and what you'll be doing for, for, for the application and for the integration. With integration, I'll repeat, there is the in-session integration and there's the out-of-session integration when the learner goes back to work. So I think uh, um, I will welcome, let me just go back to screen share. Uh, doesn't start from the beginning. Sorry. So let me just scroll through this. And then maybe now I can welcome questions as, as, uh, as I hand to John, to Ademola. Uh, 